So now I would like to call Tom Sons Giver to share with us a moment for Bishop's Patterns and Mission. I really just wanted to say thank you to the supporters of Imagine Omal Area. We've really been able to do some really incredible work. What excites me about this initiative of the United Methodist Church is that it's really been one of those places where we have seen a really clear need and together we have rolled our sleeves up and decided to make a difference. We had um, a mom contact me and her daughter uh, rather than having a birthday party, wanted to do a fundraiser for Imagine the Malaria. Every birthday, she takes that opportunity to have kind of a fundraiser event and sends all of that money straight to us. So those kind of things really hit home for me and it makes it all worthwhile. The people of our church heard the deadly buzz of the mosquito and we said, enough. Um, we've responded with our hearts, um, we've responded with our work. We've responded with our generosity and our creativity. Uh, we are acting like disciples of Jesus Christ. And we are bringing transforming healing and hope to and with and for our neighbors. The money that has been donated to Imagine No Malaria has been used to provide bed nets. It's been used to drain standing water that breeds mosquitoes is helped provide infrastructures and medical centers so that they can be, achieve that help. I got to go to a family's home and help them hang their nets. Uh, there I met a little boy who met us at the doorway and was a little suspicious about us. As he saw his mom warm up to us, he decided that we might be worth trusting. We got to pray with his family and hang nets above their beds and really celebrate the work that we were doing together. And as we were leaving, the community health volunteer who was with us, she leaned over to me and she said, Tori, his name, do you know what it means? And she told me that his name means speak up. And every day I think of that picture of Tori that I have, who is now living and thriving because of a simple net above his bed, because he had access to care. Malaria is preventable, treatable, and beatable. So let's finish the job. And we can finish this together. What a joy and privilege it is to stand here and spend a few minutes talking about the bishop's partners and mission. It's a joy not because I work in the bishop's office and I was told I would do this. <laughs> Rather, it is a great opportunity for us to celebrate what has thus far been accomplished. These next few moments, I want to remind us where we've been. What we, the laity, the clergy, the churches together of this conference have done through the bishop's partners in mission. I want to also lift up what is happening, especially in the fight with malaria and a challenge of what needs to be done. The bishop's partners in mission is one of the many opportunities that we have in this conference to join together and show in very tangible ways that we are better together. One of my favorite theologians, Charles Schultz, in a particularly poignant comic strip, has Lucy and Charlie Brown facing each other, looking at each other, and Lucy, as always, is angry, and Charlie Brown, as always, is intimidated. And Lucy takes her hand and holds it up and says, see these five fingers? Individually, they're nothing, but when banded together, they form a powerful force. The last frame is Charlie Brown looking at his fingers and saying, why can't you guys get together like that? <laughs> the Bishop's Partners in Mission has been and still does form a powerful force. Together, the money that is given to the bishop's partners in mission is divided equally between retiring the debt of Mission Central and supporting our conference's pledge of $1 million to help eradicate malaria. 
working to harness the gifts of persons, churches, children, youth groups, offerings. You and me, the people of Susquehanna Conference, have thus far given a total of $888,613.56. And we can only hope after the offering today for at the uh, ordination service that we'll have almost reached a million dollars. Your generosity and the generosity of our sisters and brothers within the bounds of the Susquehanna Conference has given this money, even as a second mile giving. It's important to affirm that all of the money you give goes directly, there's no administrative cost, to retiring the debt of Mission Central and to imagine no malaria. Every dime that a children's Sunday school class sends in, every dollar that comes from a VBA, VBS project, and every dollar, everything is given to these two projects. You know a great deal about Mission Central. You spend time at the warehouse or the hub. You help collect materials for Mission Central. We heard yesterday the report of exciting things in the forward movement for the future of Mission Central. What you may not know, however, is some important statistics and facts about Imagine No Malaria and the United Methodist mission to fight malaria in sub-Saharan Africa, where over 90% of all deaths occur because of malaria. It was in 2006 that the United Methodist Church became a founding partner with the United Nations Foundation's Nothing But Nets campaign to raise funds to purchase and distribute bed nets in Africa. In 2010, the United Methodist Church launched an Imagine No Malaria campaign to fund this project and to raise $75 million to eradicate malaria. Better Together is what the United Methodist Church does so well, and together with other agencies and our combined resources and networks of hospitals and clinics in Africa, we began the fight against malaria. Because of your work and the partnership around the world, global malaria mortality rates have fallen by about 60%. It is estimated that 6.8 million deaths from malaria have been averted since 2001. When our church began the Imagine No Malaria campaign, a child in Africa died from malaria every 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, a parent, a grandparent, a brother or sister, a family, a village experienced the death of a child. To date, 49 annual conferences, including the Susquehanna Conference, has accepted the challenge to raise funds, and we are working on our $1 million goal. Together as a denomination, we've been part of God's work and have thus far provided over 4 million life-saving bed nets. We've renovated 61 health centers and we've treated over 2.7 million people for malaria. Together we have protected over 175,000 structures with indoor residual spraying and we have trained thousands of community health workers and volunteers to work in villages and cities. Look at the map, if the, we have the map for the sub-Saharan Africa. You and your life-giving support has been at work at the Court of War, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Angola, 
Rwanda, Uganda, Zambia, Burundi, Kenya, Guinea, Nigeria, South Sudan, and malaria. We have been there and continue to be there. But sisters and brothers, our work is not finished. We've made great strides, but the tragic reality is on this day, every two minutes, a child dies from preventable malaria. Let me put that in a bit of context. Last night, as we met to finish our voting, I looked and it took about two and a half hours. In the two and a half hours, it took us to finish our voting, 75 children died from malaria. The World Health Organization's malaria report indicates that while deaths have been reduced, the reality is the support for the program of, an ima of Imagine No Malaria has plateaued. Where people once were excited, it's getting harder to engage people in this fight. As excitement wanes, so do contributions go down. So let me ask you, how many of you have grandchildren or nieces or nephews? I wanted to show a picture of the best grandson in the world. His name is Mason. And I knew if I did that, then I'd have to look at all of your ch grandchildren's pictures as well. But I want you to think about your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, or the children in your Sunday schools or in the playgrounds you see. When our children or grandchildren, nieces and nephews, come to us and run with a mosquito bite, we may put some numbing cream on it, give them a hug, and send them back to play. At night, when we give them their bath or when we put them to bed, we don't have to worry about whether that bite will lead to their illness and their death. Imagine when you hold your child or grandchild, you wonder, will they survive? But you and I can change that. You and I can give peace of mind to African parents, grandparents, sisters, and brothers when we continue to work to fulfill our pledge of $1 million and give to the bishop's partners in mission. Do you know we have a clergy person in the Susquehanna Conference that was on a mission trip to Africa, did not sleep in a bed with the net, and now struggles with the after effects of malaria. His health and his immune system is compromised. A clergy spouse said to me, when her husband first went to Africa on mission trips, she worried. She laid awake at nights, but she doesn't now because she knows when he goes, he stays in a facility that has a net over the bed that was given by us. She said, I don't have to worry anymore. Jesus said that he has come so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus has given us life and eternal life. You and I can give life and security to children and families when we give to bishops, partners in mission. I've already said this afternoon's offering will go for bishops, partners, and mission. I would invite you, encourage you, beg you to go home and tell your children, the Sunday school, the youth, the VBS, the adults, what we have done, but what we have yet to do. When we lower the debt at Mission Central, that frees up money for them to use for mission and ministry. When you and I give to partners in mission, together we provide nets, we provide health care and education for persons to battle malaria, but we also work to give abundant life and a longer life to children, youth, and adults.
we're close, but we have work to do. But we are a generous conference. And when we form together into one, we are a powerful force. May God continue to encourage us to be generous and continue to give to the Bishop's Partners in Mission. Well, since I came to this annual conference and I challenged our people, please give this bishop $100 as you are able. And I tried different things to, in a way, to hopefully inspire you and encourage you to offer your gifts. Uh, that prompted me to have push-ups. And then some people, when I meet in their local churches, and they tell me that, Bishop, when are you going to do it again? <laughs> but now I have to say that I am no longer 18 years old. <laughs> and particularly, I didn't have that much sleep last night. <laughs> so what should I do? I would like to do it. Um, but you've got to give more than you originally thought that you are going to give to Bishop Spartan in mission. <laughs> so I challenge you to give more. Soon, hopefully, we'll hit million dollar mark. Amen? We are almost there. And then go to your places and share the stories. Stories, life touched, transformed, served, redeemed, and even saved. Literally saved. Amen? Amen. And as I are getting more aged. <laughs> I have to do the way that I can succeed. <laughs> so I will ask you to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, nine, twenty. One, two, three, four. You know how to do it, right? Okay. Are you ready? I have to succeed. <laughs> Ready? Thank you. Thank you. 
please translate your applause and amen into money. <laughs> Thank you. Our people are such a generous, mission-minded, faithful, committed, dedicated people of God, servants of God, ministers in the gospel, indeed the partners in mission. Thanks be to God for you.